Hello everyone and welcome to this section. In this section, we're going to cover a famous classification technique called logistic regression, all right? So first, we're going to start with an intuition, just a very high level um, intuition of logistic regression. And then we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into practical examples. And we're going to have uh, two projects, practical projects, where we're gonna uh, dig a little bit deeper into how to load the data set, how to perform training of a logistic reg regressor. And we're gonna see how can we use that to classify um, mainly data into two or more classes. All right, so let's go ahead and cover what do you mean by logistic regression. So before covering logistic regression, let's go back and kind of do a little bit of review of the linear regression, all right? So if you guys recall in the linear regression section is that we use linear regression to predict outputs on a continuous spectrum, all right? So we took actually a previous example on how can we predict revenue based on an outside air temperature. If you guys remember, we had the ice cream stand and we said, okay, let's say at temperature 20 degrees, we're expecting, let's say the daily revenue was around $500. As temperature goes up, let's say 35 degrees C, we were able to increase the revenue, let's say to $700 or $800 daily. And we were able to kind of obtain a linear model or using linear regression, which is again, Y equals to MX plus B, if you guys recall. And that was pretty much our straight line. And that's it. And the key element here, or the key point, is that the outputs were actually in a continuous spectrum, which means that the revenue can range, for example, let's say from $100 going up to $1,000, all right? Logistic regression is actually completely different, all right? Logistic regression is used to predict binary outputs. So simply put, we have kind of two classes. We call it class zero or class one. Examples like, uh, you're going into an exam and you have kind of two likely outcomes. It's either pass or fail. It's either, for example, we're like playing a lottery. It's you have two options, either you're gonna win or you're gonna lose. If you, for example, your, you know, your body assessment, let's say yearly assessment, you're either healthy or sick. Just one of these two options, either zero or one, two possible values. And that's the overall idea when we apply logistic regression to perform mainly classification. So, and that, so basically when you go ahead and you are, um, let's say presented by a problem and you want it to pick, okay, should I go, let's say with the linear regression or should I go with a logistic regression? The first question that you need to ask, what, is, what does the output look like? If the output is continuous in a form, okay, so you have multiple va values or multiple parameters, let's say, again, revenue, you are predicting salary, you are predicting something like that that's continuous in nature, then you need to go into, let's say, linear regression or maybe, you know, step up your game a little bit and, and go into polynomial regression where the output in continu is continuous in nature. You need like an equation that, you know, you can, you can use it to predict the output. However, if you are performing classification, if your output is, let's say, zero or one, if your output is, let's say, pass or fail, if your output, let's say, if a customer bought, for example, a car or not, when you have these kind of two classes decision, then we're gonna go with logistic regression. All right, I know I've been talking a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and take a, pick an example and let's see how, you know, if we, how can we apply linear regression and maybe logistic regression as well. All right, so let's assume that we have kind of a very basic example that you wanted to draw here on the x-axis, the independent variable is the hours of studying, which is how many hours. So let's assume, you know, you may, may be working for around one hour, one and a half hours, two hours, and so on. And you have kind of expectations, all right? Either pass or fail. Fail is uh, labeled as zero and pass is labeled as one, all right? So in the x-axis, you put hours of studying, and on the y-axis, you put pass or fail, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and actually plot these points. So we're gonna say, okay, if you put one hours of studying, well, there is, you're gonna fail, right? So it's zero, so the y is actually zero. You go ahead, put 1.5 hours, so one and a half hours, again, zero. Two hours, again, zero, and so on. And then three hours, you're gonna actually gonna pass the, the exam. So that's why you got one here. So basically, this is zero, and here, this is one, all right? 
Okay, so let's assume that I don't know anything about logistic regression. I'm going to assume, okay, you know what? Using these data points, I'm just going to go ahead and apply linear regression. All right, I'm just going to take these bunch of values and I'm just going to try to fit a linear model in there. All right. And unfortunately, if you try to do that, you will unfortunately fail miserably, okay? The results will be really bad. First of all, we don't have any values in between, right? Our outcome or our output is either 0 or 1. We don't have, let's say, 0 0.5. You know, we don't need 0 0.5. We don't need 0 0.7. We don't need that continuous nature in here, right? At the same time, our output is kind of bounded, Right? So our, our output, we know it's kind of saturated in here between 0 and between 1. However, for that specific linear model, it actually can go unbounded in a way. It can go up to, let's say, you know, 2 or maybe 3 and so on. It can continue up and it can continue to the negative 2. We don't need all this. So simply put, our linear model is not a great candidate to perform classification. It's actually a terrible solution. All right, so that's why we actually move from linear regression to logistic regression. So let's take a look at how can we do that. So again, this is again a quick overview of the, of the intuition. We have done that before. Here we have our linear model. This is basically what we're, we're not interested in. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to take our straight line and actually bend it in a way, okay? So we're gonna take it and change our function in a way to make it like this. If we make it like this, that would be way better that will basically explain our problem. Why? First of all, this curve, and again, I'm gonna dig in, like, you know, into a lot of mathematics to show you how can we actually make that linear model or linear line and actually shift it into that format. First of all, um, the, for logistic regression or for that specific curve here, all right, the output is what we're looking for. It's actually either zero here or one in here, right? That's the first step, okay? Which is, the, which is basically overcome the issue here with the linear model, all right? So long story short is that logistic regression model is better suited for classification. Why? Because it's kind of saturated in here so we can set it either to zero or either to one. So the question is, how can we move from kind of that format to linear model into a logistic regression model where we actually have a curve that looks like this? Let's take a look at a practical kind of, you know, example and take a look at some of the mathematics. So let's assume again, we're going to go ahead with the exact same example. We have our hours of studying and here we have our pass or fail criteria. And here we have our logistic regression model. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, we are going to go along and apply the exact same linear regression equation. If you guys remember, y equals to b node plus b1x, which is the exact same function. All right. What we are going to do is that we're going to apply a function, it's what we call it sigmoid function. And moving forward, we're actually gonna call it sigmoid activation function when we shift a little bit uh, into the artificial neural networks. All right, so what do you mean by sigmoid function? So simply, a sigmoid function, which is equals to one divided by one plus e power minus y, okay? So simply put, the sigmoid function is what gives us that specific curve in here. All right, so what we're gonna do is gonna say, okay, let's go ahead and take our linear equation, y equals to b node plus b1x, and actually substitute in here within that sigmoid function. And what we're gonna get is px equals to one divided by one plus e power minus, and simply we're gonna take b node plus b1x and substitute in here. So we're gonna end up simply with px equals to one divided by one plus e power minus b node plus b1x. All right, I know that's, you know, doesn't, it looks a little bit like, you know, strange and maybe a little bit complex, but that's pretty much the equation that describes this specific curve, all right? So what happened is, is that we simply start with a linear equation first, all right? So we're gonna go ahead, apply the linear equation as usual, and that linear equation, we're gonna give us, we're gonna kind of predict a value first. And what we're gonna do, is that we're gonna go ahead here and substitute in our sigmoid function, which is one over one plus e power minus y. Substitute with that straight line in here, and we'll come up with what we call it the logistic regression model. And the key element here is, this is basically a probability, if you think about it. 
it ranges from zero to one, and it's giving us kind of, okay, what's the expected probability for a specific input? So let's assume that we have, for example, our X here, which is our input, let's say is one hour. So the expected probability of success, which is PX, we're gonna be around zero. That means, you know, highly likely that students will gonna fail, for example, if they only study for one hour. However, if we go in here, and we say, okay, you know what? Maybe that student studied for, let's say, six or seven hours. So we're going to go here, substitute an X with, let's say, six or seven hours, and we'll come up with a probability of, let's say, 0.9, for instance, which means we're going to be in here somewhere. That means you are having a very high probability of success. So simply put, what we did here is that we went from just a continuous output, in this case, in our linear equation, we actually moved into a probability that can range from zero to one, which is perfectly suited for our classification problem. All right, so the problem is, okay, what is the classification part? You know, where can we actually decide, okay, are you gonna succeed or are you gonna fail? So if you think about it, we actually need to put kind of a threshold somewhere in here that can tell us, okay, if our probability is below specific threshold, you are gonna fail. If the probability is above certain threshold, you are gonna succeed. And that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing here. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to convert our probability to a class value, which is either zero or one, by applying a threshold. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna set the probability threshold of 0.5. If our probability is higher than 0.5, well, you are class one, which is succeed, for instance. If your probability which is the outcome of this equation, is below 0.5, then, well, you're going to fail. That means class zero. And that's pretty much it. That's how you're going to simply take a list of inputs, all right, use our logistic regression, kind of, you know, like instead of using a linear model in a nutshell, we're just going to use that sigmoid function in here. We're going to calculate a probability, which is, you know, ranges from zero to one, and we're gonna do kind of a threshold afterwards that can tell us, okay, if you are above that threshold, you're gonna have a class one. If you're below that threshold, you're gonna have class zero. And that's pretty much how can you perform the logistic regression in a nutshell. Again, please bear in mind that in general, we're gonna perform linear regression. We're gonna use it for continuous output. However, for logistic regression, we're mainly gonna be using it for classification problems. All right. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this lecture. Let's go ahead and recap what we have done so far. So, so far we covered the logistic regression and we compared the logistic regression performance to linear regression is that logistic regression mainly application is used to predict binary outputs through either zero or one, win or lose, pass or fail, healthy or sick. And we took a look at an example and we realized that linear model will gonna fail miserably that we need kind of, we change that function in a way and make it like look like this somehow. Have a saturation, have range from zero to one, maybe a probability would work great in this case. And again, we saw that this is our linear model. We're not interested in it when we do classification. We would like to have a function like this. And then we took a look at the mathematics behind it, which is simply, we're gonna take our linear model, substitute here in our sigmoid equation, which is one over one plus e power minus y, will come up with this equation, and this equation simply calculates our probability. Range of numbers range from zero to one, all right? If you are very close to zero here, if you are very close to zero, which is in this section, we're gonna classify you as class zero. If you are above that specific threshold, if the probability is above the specific threshold, we're gonna say, you know what, you, are belo you belong to class one. And that's pretty much how can you perform logistic regression. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. And in the next lecture, I'm going to walk you through um, kind of a graphical representation of the performance of the, um, when we try to assess the performance of the logistic regression in, a, in something that we call it um, confusion matrix. Okay, you're going to hear that topic or, you know, that term a lot. So we're going to cover the confusion matrix. And afterwards, we're going to jump into Jupyter Notebook. And basically, we're going to go through in two entire projects where we're going to apply logistic regression in practice. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and see you in the next lecture.